Hey everyone, in today's video, I wanna give you a glimpse at the brand new Social Security Statement. Now it's high time they gave this thing a makeover, but there are a few things that you may be used to seeing that won't be there anymore. And there's also gonna be some new things on it as well, so I wanna walk through this for a few minutes and give you a tour of what you can expect. But before we get there, I've told you that things with Social Security are going to change, just like this statement change that we're talking about today but this isn't the end of the changes. There are still a lot of things to come down the pike and when they get close, I'll be here breaking them down. But if you wanna know when I release those videos, you gotta be subscribed. So if you haven't yet, just go ahead and click that subscribe button and that notifications bell. The current version of the social security statement has been around since 1999. It has some great information on it, but it's been the same for so long that most people don't even pay attention to most of what's in the statement. It's just how the brain works. If something becomes really familiar, we stop paying attention to it. Just this morning, my wife asked me when I was gonna paint some spots on a wall upstairs. I'd put it in some holes several weeks ago and then I never got around to painting them. Now, I don't go up there all that often, but often enough that as the weeks went by, I eventually stopped noticing those spots that needed painting. And the social security statement has become like those spots on my wall. Everything's been the same for so long that most people don't even notice the verbiage that the administration includes. They just see the estimated benefit amounts and maybe the earnings record. So an update is well past due because there's some important information that you need to see. Now, do not expect to receive this new statement in your mailbox. From what I've been told, this version will only be an online version. It will never be a mailed version. But online statements are quickly becoming the standard anyway. The only people who still receive a paper version of the Social Security Statement are those who are age 60 and older, and only then if they don't already have a My SSA account. And right now, this new online statement is not available to everyone. So don't be surprised if you go check your My SSA account and you still have the old version. This started rolling out in late May, and right now, about 20% of those with online accounts have been given access to this new statement version. Now, my personal statement is still the old style, but later on this year, they're gonna do a full rollout where me and the rest of you who don't have it are gonna have access to this if you have an online account. So I wanna cover this section by section, but there's a big change on page two that I want you to watch until we get there because you need to know about this. Okay, so here's what the new statement looks like. Instead of the four page green and white statement, the new version is only two pages with text and shaded boxes. Where the old statement used the first page to cover some generic information, the new version jumps right into information that's specific to you. One of the first things I noticed is how they moved a warning at the very top of the statement that says, the retirement disability and survivor's benefit below are based on your earnings that were taxed for Social Security. These amounts may be affected if you participate in a retirement plan or receive a pension based on earnings not covered by Social Security. Now this may sound like an obvious statement, but for those who worked a job where they did not pay Social Security taxes, like teachers in several states, firefighters, police officers, and several other types of public service jobs, this is a good warning to them that the quoted benefit amounts may not be accurate. I've seen lots of cases where someone was devastated to find out that their actual benefit would be much lower than the estimated benefit on their statement. But again, this only affects those who worked at a job where they did not pay Social Security taxes and earned a pension from that work. I'm really glad to see them put this warning front and center. And then in the section directly below that warning, they get right into the benefit amounts. They tell you if you have earned enough credits for your own benefit, what your specific full retirement age is, and then tell you that your benefit amount will increase for every month you delay your filing for benefits between age 62 and 70. To my knowledge, the monthly increase was never mentioned in the old statement, which led many people to believe that their benefit would only increase on an annual basis. So I'm glad they included this sentence. And then they say that your estimate is based on your historical earnings and assume that you will make the same earnings as you did in the year prior. For this individual statement that we're using here, he did not have any earnings in the prior year, so the estimate is based on earning zero dollars until he starts his benefit. Directly next to that section, they have an easy to read chart with the actual benefit estimates. What I like about this 
is that they show the benefit amounts for each year between age 62 and 70. The older version only has the estimate at 62, full retirement age, and 70. And if you're already 62 and haven't filed, the old version will show current age, full retirement age, and age 70. This lays it out year by year, which I think is going to lead to making better choices. In the next shaded box, they have information on disability benefits. Now, the individual we're using here has not met the recent work requirements for disability benefits. If they had met those requirements, there would be an estimate in this box that someone could expect to receive if they were to file and uh, be qualified for disability benefits. Then we have the shaded box showing what has been paid in Social Security and Medicare taxes. Now, this information is great, especially for those who don't think Social Security is a screaming good deal. For example, if this person files at 62 for a fully reduced benefit, he'll get his $52,814 that he paid in taxes. He'll get that back in only 35 months. Now, the next section has a benefits estimate for various survivor benefits. It first shows that your minor child could receive 75% of your full retirement age benefit and then also shows that your spouse who is caring for that child could also receive 75%. Then it shows the survivor benefit available to a spouse if he or she waits until full retirement age. And finally, it lists the total dollar amount of benefits that can be paid out to all beneficiaries. The last shaded box on page one has information on Medicare. This is where you'll be able to quickly see if you have enough credits to qualify for the program. And it lists the contact information that's specific to Medicare. And at the bottom of page one, they had the same warning as they include on the old version reminding people that Congress can change the program, which may mean that your benefits estimate may not be what your actual benefit is. And then on to page two. Now there's a change that I think is really big, but I want to cover these other two sections first. The first information box is titled earnings not covered by social security. Underneath in bold, it says you may have earnings from work not covered by social security. And then it goes on to talk about the windfall elimination provision and the government pension offset. Now, those are two provisions I talked about at the beginning with the warning on the top of page one where it says your estimate may not be correct if you have a pension from a job where you did not pay Social Security taxes. The individual who let me have a copy of his statement for this video does have earnings from work that was not covered by Social Security. So it seems that this warning may only be there in bold for those in this situation. It goes on to give a brief explanation of what the WEP and GPO is and kind of how it works. And then there's the box titled, Important Things to Know About Your Benefits. Now at first, this seems like some generic information, but I think they've done a really good job of condensing down some really important information into just a few bullet points here. The first point is that Social Security is not intended to be your only source of income. Now this language was also on the old statement and I think it's a great reminder that needs to be included as a disclaimer on just about everything they put out because this is important to understand. The next bullet point says you need 40 credits of work, at least 10 years, to qualify for retirement earnings. The amount of your benefit is based on your highest 35 years of earnings. If you have fewer than 35 years of earnings, years without work count as zero and may reduce your benefit amount. Now, this language is not on the old statement and I think it's a great summary of how many years are used in the calculation of your monthly benefit. There's a lot of confusion on this because some of the pensions are calculated on your highest three or highest five. And some people make the mistake of assuming that Social Security benefits are calculated the same way, and they're not. It's based on your highest 35 years of earnings. The next bullet point says that benefits are adjusted for cost of living increases. No big surprise there. But the next point is fantastic. It says, the age you claim benefits will affect the benefit amount for your surviving spouse. This is one of the reminders that I'm constantly harping on. When you are deciding when to file for benefits, you have to take into account how your decision will impact a spouse who may outlive you. So I'm glad they put that in there. And then there's a line about if you get retirement or disability benefits, your spouse and children may also qualify for benefits. Good reminder for those who are trying to decide on a strategy of when to file. Then there's a much needed reminder on divorce spouse benefit that says, if you are divorced and were married for 10 years, you may be able to claim benefits on your ex-spouse's record. If your divorce spouse receives benefits on your record, that does not affect you or your current 
spouse's benefit amounts. Now, I find that the subject of divorce spouse benefits are often misunderstood. And in just two sentences, they just answered several very common questions on Social Security for divorced spouses. And then the last notable bullet point here is a note on deem filing that says, when you apply for either retirement or spousal benefits, you may be required to apply for the other benefit as well. Essentially letting you know that for most of us, filing for one benefit and then later switching to another benefit is no longer an option. Now notice they did say when you file for retirement or spousal benefits, they did not say survivor benefits because with survivor benefits, you can still file for one and then later switch to another. And then the last three bullet points are just informational that's probably too generic for us to cover individually. What I think is perhaps one of the biggest changes to this entire statement is the change to your earnings record. They changed up the way they show your earnings, which may make it a little harder to check your historical earnings for accuracy. Now they did this for brevity, so I get it, but I'm afraid it may make it easier to have a mistake in your earnings record and not catch it. In the old statement, they would show your earnings on a year-by-year -year basis. But in the new version, they consolidate some of your historical earnings into 10-year blocks and only show the sum of earnings from those 10 years. If you wanna see your full record on a year-by-year -year basis, you have to go back to your MySSA account and on the home screen, you'll see a link towards the bottom that says, review your full earnings now. Again, I get it, they can't both shorten the statement and include everything from the old statement, but I wish they would have found a way to show a complete earnings history in the earnings section of this statement. So that's the brief summary of the new statement. If you haven't gotten access to the new version yet, you should by the end of this year, and you're gonna find that in your My SSA account. And before we leave, just to note that Social Security is just one little part of your retirement. Now, it's an important piece to get right, but there's a lot of other stuff to consider as well. And if you want some help from me and my team on helping you with all the pieces of your retirement, there's a link in the description where you can get in contact with us. Thanks so much for watching.